Before the likes of Lori Harvey and Angela Simmons, there was an it girl in the 90s named Arnell Simpson, the daughter of the famous O.J. Simpson. For decades, children with celebrity parents or rich and powerful families, or nepotism babies as they would call them, have gotten some kind of attention from the public, whether it's just for being attractive or for landing a bunch of opportunities that they probably wouldn't have gotten if it weren't for their connections to wealthy and powerful individuals. Arnell gained the spotlight during her father's infamous 1994 trial, aka the trial of the century. She testified during his trial, and before she knew it, she was walking red carpets and covering magazines. While Arnell's support for her father was a blessing in the beginning, in the end, it turned out to be a curse. This is the untold truth about Arnell Simpson, an unsung it girl. This video is sponsored by Scentbird. Scentbird is a monthly fragrance subscription that allows you to try new perfumes or colognes every month before you commit to a full-size bottle. Scentbird gives me the opportunity to try perfumes by over 600 indie brands and fashion designers like Prada, Gucci, Valentino, and my personal favorites, Juicy Couture and Versace. This month, I got Yellow Diamond by Versace, which is a spicy sweet base, Stem by Malin and Getz, a more floral scent, and my favorite this month, Euphoria by Calvin Klein. I actually had this perfume years ago back when it first came out, so thank you Scentbird for reminding me to get another bottle. It also has a men's version if there are any guys out there that are interested. Each month, you'll get a 30-day supply of scents that come in small, stylish, leak-proof, recyclable cases, and they also come with a spray automizer, which makes it safe to travel with. And I recently brought mine along with me on my trip to London. Scentbird's fragrances are way bigger than the samples you typically get and will definitely last you for way longer than a month. All you have to do is head over to the link in the description box, take a short quiz to let them know your vibe and the kind of scents you're into. Then you get to choose which scents you'd like to try. Use my code BFTV55 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird, making your purchase only $7. Everything will be linked in the description box. Thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get into the story. Arnell Simpson was born on December 4, 1968, the first child of Marguerite L. Whitley and O.J. Simpson, a star running back, defensive back, and track athlete who was on his way to becoming a superstar NFL player. Arnell was born the same day he won his first Heisman Trophy. O.J., Marguerite, and their baby Arnell relocated to upstate New York after he was drafted in the NFL by the Buffalo Bills, and the family settled in the Amherst neighborhood. The couple had two more children, a son named Jason Lamar, born in 1970, and a daughter named Aaron LaShawn, born in 1977. But Erin sadly drowned in the family swimming pool when she was only two years old. Despite having a sports icon and celebrity as a father, Arnell had a fairly normal upbringing, especially when her parents divorced when she was 12 years old due to OJ's ongoing affair with a young waitress named Nicole Brown, who became his wife years later. Marguerite went back to California and focused on raising her kids. Arnell remained close to her father despite living in separate households. She attended the prestigious Crossroads School in Santa Monica, Los Angeles, and attended the University of Colorado, where she majored in education, human development, and minored in psychology, before graduating from Howard University in 1992 with a degree in child psychology. After graduating, Arnell returned to LA and moved in with her father at his famous Rockingham estate. She wanted to take time to decide what path she wanted to take as far as her career is concerned. But OJ made her get up and find work and earn her own way to learn survival skills. That's when Arnell stumbled upon the world of wardrobe styling, working as a styling assistant for her stylist friend. She worked behind the scenes of celebrity photo shoots, award shows, 
commercials, music videos, album covers, and movies. She was given her first styling gig by American music executive producer and founder of Uptown Records, Andre Harrell. And she drew most of her style inspo from her mother, Marguerite. I mean, just look at her. One of Arnell's most notable clients is Nona Gay, singer, fashion model, actress, and daughter of the late singer Marvin Gaye. Arnell styled Nona for the Soul Train Lady of Soul Awards and also worked with her for her album cover. She was finally making a name for herself as Arnell Simpson and not just OJ Simpson's daughter. But little did she know, a terrible family tragedy would end her career as a stylist but would end up throwing her into the limelight in the best way possible. It began last Monday with an image no one ever expected to see. O.J. Simpson in handcuffs. Give yourself up, man. Just stop. Please stop. Throughout it all, one question on everyone's mind. A question no one imagined would ever be asked about one of the nation's most beloved personalities. Did he do it? Everyone is speculating. Last Thursday, both victims were laid to rest separately. 25-year-old Ronald Goldman, a man everyone said was full of dreams, dreams that will never be realized. And 35-year-old Nicole Simpson, O.J.'s ex-wife. At her funeral, a grim-looking O.J. Simpson, the couple's young children, by his side. In June 1994, her father, O.J. Simpson, was arrested and charged with the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. The morning after the killings, Arnell was awakened by police officers who delivered the news about her stepmother, which she says left her shocked, stunned, upset, confused, and scared. She then contacted Nicole Brown Simpson's mother to tell her the tragic news. The trial started in November 1994 and went on for 11 months, and Arnell stood by her father throughout the trial. She was the first witness for the defense and gave emotional testimonies painting a positive picture of her father that debunked aspects of the prosecution's case that suggested his guilt in the deaths. After all, she was staying in his house at the time of the slayings and said that her father was actually home. She also testified that she never saw her father wear a black or blue-black cotton sweatsuit, such as the one prosecutors suggested the killer wore. What, what was your date of birth? 12-4-68. Something unusual about that particular date? Um, I was born the same day my dad won the Heisman Trophy. Where you will be. And I would always like prepare an hour before and he'll like get dressed in the last 15 minutes before we would have to leave. This is He's done this for years. That's something that you've seen as you were growing up. Yeah. Uh, above drive and the word. What you described for the court and jury again, his demeanor, how he seemed and how he appeared to you at that point. Upset, uh, out of control, distraught, emotional, lifeless. He was just it's so hard to explain because there was so much going on. It was so emotional. And I was just trying to to comfort him because he just seemed like he didn't know what to do. Uh, Ms. Simpson, uh, are you related to uh, Mr. O.J. Simpson? Yes, I am. And how are you related? His daughter. And how old are you? 25. Uh, do you live uh, with the, uh, uh, Mr. Simpson at the uh, uh, family home on uh, Rockingham? Yes, I do. And how long have you lived there with her? I call Kathy and I say, Kathy, I have some really horrible news. And then I started to cry, and I handed the phone over to the detective. And the remaining conversation was with the detective and, and Kathy. Kathy. Yes. Uh, did you at some point leave the premises to retrieve the children? Yes, I did. Uh, and where did you go to retrieve the children? I went down to the police station to pick up the kids. And you and brought them back to the premises? Immediately back to the house. Call 
to Nicole's mother. <clears throat> yes, I did. Uh, and did you tell her the news? I attempted to tell her. And then the detective ended up telling Judy. Arnell talked on the phone to her father in jail almost every night, offering him advice. This was the most publicized trial in criminal history, full of shocking twists that left the country divided. You can even say this trial sparked a race war. It is often characterized as the trial of the century. But this video isn't really about the O.J. Simpson trial, so let's skip ahead. With more than 150 million viewers in the country tuned in to watch, Arnell became one of the stars to emerge from the trial. Everybody wanted to know more about O.J. Simpson's daughter. She was hounded by paparazzi, people wanted her autograph, and she was even flooded with thousands of letters in a mail addressed to her. She told the Los Angeles Times, I don't feel like I'm a movie star. That is not what I'm trying to get out of this. I think it's inappropriate for me to sign an autograph when I haven't done anything that any other normal person wouldn't do in the circumstances. But still, Arnell was being approached for interviews, walking red carpets, gracing the covers and pages of urban magazines, and was rumored to be romantically linked to a few famous men. She definitely benefited from all the public attention from the trial. But Arnell would soon learn the price that comes with fame. After OJ's acquittal, he was awarded joint custody of his children with Nicole's parents. That's when Arnell stepped up to help care for her younger half-siblings, Sydney and Justin, who were now without a mother. She often took them to Magic Mountain and to the beach with her brother Jason. Arnell made sure to provide them with a normal life. But the media attention was starting to take a toll on her, and she grew frustrated with the public scrutiny. People showed up at the Rockingham estate to heckle her over her father. Photographers made her paranoid, and the attention had become too much for her boyfriend at the time. She said, I've worked so hard to be Arnell Simpson, and not Arnell Simpson, OJ Simpson's daughter. And right when I got to a point in my life when I was becoming an independent woman, it kind of backfired on me because of what's going on now. I'm not angry. I don't believe it's my father's fault or my fault. It's just something that happened that I have to deal with. There were some days when I was like, why dad? Why did you have certain people in your life? Why did this have to happen to her? Some days I would be like, you know, dad, I don't feel like talking. I'm sorry. Just please understand me. There have definitely been days when I've just been like, excuse my language, f this, end quote. Arnell had also landed herself in some legal trouble. On April 24th, 1998, she was arrested on suspicion of drunk driving after she lost control of her car, crashed into a bus bench, and drove through the window of a Beverly Hills apartment building. She was transported to a nearby hospital for treatment of minor injuries sustained during the crash, then was taken into custody. Arnell pleaded no contest and was sentenced to two days in jail, fined more than $10,000 in restitution for damages, and ordered to enter an 18-month drunken driving program. In the 90s, she was rumored to have dated Tretch from Naughty by Nature and NFL player Tony Smith. It was also alleged by old friends of Tupac that Arnell may have hooked up with the late rapper. They said that during her father's trial, she often hung out at the studio with death row artists, including Tupac. Danny Boy, who sang vocals on the rapper's singles, I Ain't Mad At Ya and Toss It Up, made the assumption in an interview with The Art of Dialogue. Ornell Simpson, did you see her around? Yeah, Tupac? I knew that name when you said it. OJ's daughter, right? Yeah, tell me about that. Yo. Yeah, it is. it's kind of fun to have her around and her daddy fighting a case. <laughs> the biggest case in LA, and she hanging in the studio with all, us all the time. All the time. That was one of Tupac chicks, huh? or? But, but probably was, because that's who I seen her, seen, him, seen her around. So she was probably just, I don't know. You know, one too many times that a girl hanging around and she fucking somebody. <laughs> All right, let's be honest. However, these comments cannot be classified as confirmation or presented as facts, just speculation. In 1998, Tupac Shakur's bodyguard, Frank Alexander, published a book titled, Got Your Back, 
the life of a bodyguard in the hardcore world of gangsta rap, where he made claims about the late rapper and his relationships with Arnell and Kadada Jones, the daughter of Quincy Jones. In the book, Frank claims that Arnell spent a romantic night with the rapper, but her lawyer said they only met to discuss work. Frank says, I got it straight from Tupac what he had done all night. If you guys saw my Kadada Jones video, you'll remember that her and Tupac were dating and engaged around this time, so this is a little messy. Lawyers for both of the ladies succeeded in delaying the book's publication, but the book was still eventually released that year. On the subject of having her private life invaded, she told Black Hair Magazine, I'll be honest with you, it's rough at times and sometimes I've been really upset and sometimes I've cried over it. But in the long run, I know who I am, I know how I've been raised, and I know the truth. And my family and friends know the truth. That is what's most important. Really believe that there are certain things in life that you just don't have the power over. You can try to correct them, but that's a waste of time. So I always believe that the truth comes out in the end." End quote. Unfortunately for Arnell, the fame would soon die down and she'd be right back at the center of OJ's legal woes. This time, her constant support for her father would be her demise. By the 2000s, Arnell's celebrity had faded significantly and she just completely disappeared into obscurity. On September 13th, 2007, OJ released a book titled, If I Did It a hypothetical description of the 1994 slayings if he had actually done it. In August that year, a Florida bankruptcy court awarded the rights to the book to the Goldman family to partially cover the civil judgment. If you guys didn't know, OJ was later found financially liable for the debts of Nicole and Ronald in a civil suit. He was ordered to pay $33.5 million in damages to the families, which he had not paid. Once the family was awarded the rights to the book, they renamed it to, If I Did It, Confessions of the Killer, reducing the size of the word if to make it look like it says, I did it. But it turns out, it was actually Arnell who came up with the concept for the book and brought the idea to her father, according to a deposition she gave in the bankruptcy case. That year, OJ was arrested in Las Vegas, Nevada for armed robbery and kidnapping. During his 2008 trial, Arnell took the stand to defend her father and read a letter advocating for his freedom on behalf of her three siblings, including the children he had with Nicole. He was convicted of the crimes and was sentenced to 33 years in prison with a maximum of nine years without parole. Years later, while behind bars, reports started emerging that OJ was fighting foreclosure and was furious with Arnell for mismanaging his money and not keeping up with mortgage payments of his South Florida mansion while he was incarcerated. She was also the president of his Lorraine Brooke Associates company when it went into bankruptcy. A family friend accused Arnell of being an alcoholic and shopaholic and alleged she squandered her father's $25,000 a month NFL pension. The National Enquirer reported about an angry phone call from his Nevada prison where he accused her of blowing his money on alcohol, shopping, and living a lavish lifestyle. The insider said, OJ fought with Arnell all the time about her drinking, and he tried for years to get her married to get her out of his house. All she would do is sit around and drink vodka, even for breakfast. But according to other reports, Arnell says all of the money actually went towards her father's hefty legal fees. She says all of the controversy surrounding the 1994 tragedy followed her and her siblings everywhere they went making it difficult for her to build a career and keep a job. She was said to have worked for a rapper named Hash and even produced a few fashion shows, but nothing really stuck for her. She kept a low profile for many years before re-emerging when OJ was eligible for parole in 2017. Seems like the father and daughter remained on good terms despite the financial issues because Arnell tearfully testified for his release, saying she and her siblings and the rest of the family wanted him to come home, and their wish was granted. 
No one really knows how much we have been through this ordeal in the last nine years. My experience with him is, is that he's like my best friend and my rock. So on behalf of my family, my brother, my sister, an aunt, an uncle, his friends, we just want him to come home. Arnell, who is now in her 50s, remains out of the public eye. But she does pop up every now and then in Instagram posts by family and friends. She has also helped produce several documentaries in support of her father like OJ, Trial of the Century, OJ Simpson, Chase and Freedom, and OJ, Made in America. She was portrayed by Ariel D. King in the FX true crime television series, American Crime Story. Thank you again to the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Use my code BFTV55 to get 55% off your first order at Scentbird. Everything will be linked in the description box. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.